open. Get my fingers crossed that this all works today. All right, so um, what's up, everybody? I'm working on doing some error reporting today. Um, you know, the game's getting closer and closer to the point where it's actually finished. And one of the things, when it is finally finished, I need to have some kind of like automatic error report. Actually, I need to have this now during the beta. Is it some kind of automatic error reporting? So I played the game on my friend's computer while on my vacation for Thanksgiving, and it crashed. It just, it just wouldn't. It, it ran the intro, and then it wouldn't play the game, and I wondered why. And I thought, how can I catch that situation for, you know, I don't want any player to ever have to experience that. I don't want the game to just randomly crash. Or not, not randomly crash, but just hang. You know, what happened there? So the only way I could really catch that um, for other people playing the game is to produce some kind of log in, in release mode. Right now the game doesn't produce any log whatsoever in release mode. In debug mode it does. It does like a detailed log. But in release mode, it needs to produce some kind of log, and then it needs to automatically send that to me um, if um, if the player didn't, if the game didn't exit cleanly the time before. So let me show you what the this is what the log looks like. You know, it's got all the it's got some a few important details, basically the what happened, um, and then game exiting cleanly. That's that's the most important part, right? Did the game exit cleanly? So basically what I'm gonna code here today is first of all some release mode logging and then secondly, you know, this is pro probably won't get done during today's stream, but um, to check for the word game, you know, for this phrase here, game exiting cleanly in the latest log file whenever the game starts. So the, whenever the game starts, it'll look at the latest log file, see if it's got this phrase. If it doesn't have this phrase, it'll ask the user, hey, would you like to automatically send error reports to wizard foo? And then they click yes, and then it'll automatically send that to me. I'm not sure how I'll do that. It might be FTP or something like that. It'd be nice if it's just nothing. It's just so easy for the for the player. And also, of course, there's going to be no private information whatsoever in that kind of log file. This is just, you know, data about the game running, nothing about their computer whatsoever. So anyways, it should be pretty simple and easy for the for the player and also for me to get these files. So that's the goal at least. Is this all working? Game show. You sh your game showing? Looks like today we have no drop frames. Everything's been green so far. Hopefully this works. Yesterday we were having some crazy troubles. All right. So I'm going to get to it. First thing is to um, start by cleaning up the log. It's not going to output some things like flux open and creating area and all this stuff. We're not going to need, well, create some of these things we do want it to put into the, the log. What's up, the newest followers? Hey, everybody. Yo. Okay, so um, I'm going to start by turning off all verbosity. World verbosity zero. Pretty much all this verbosity is off now. So now if I run it again, I should have less in the log.
music playing. This could be like a music verbosity. I'm gonna block verbosity. Hey, what's up, HD? What's up? How you doing, man? Yeah, salad dongs. Exactly. Yep. I'm gonna make it so the the player can send automatically send error reports. The first time it'll ask them, hey, do you wanna send this? You're good? Right on. Yeah, so basically just taking this log file and making it so it's a nice output for release mode. And then in release mode, it needs to log. So right now it doesn't log at all um, in release mode. But I want this all to go to a log.txt file. <clears throat> and then if the game detects that its latest log file doesn't have game exiting cleanly at the bottom, then it, uh, it will ask to send the send the error report. So that's the goal. Just basically, the the goal here is to to catch to catch bugs that I wouldn't be able to catch at at somebody without being at somebody's computer. You know, like if somebody's game hangs for some reason at some point, at least there will be a log file, and at least I can look at that log file or have that log file automatically sent to me, and you know. So I think the first thing I'll do is make the make it so logging automatically puts that all to a log.txt file. Yeah. Okay. One thing would be nice is to redirect standard out. What's up, Boogie? Okay, so I'm gonna look up how to do, I forgot how to do this, redirect. Yo, how you been, Boogie? How's Turkey Day? Okay, this is not, I don't think this is what I mean. I actually want to redirect standard out. Like, basically, I want to redirect. Cocos 2D, even Cocos 2D's, like anything in external libraries, this right here and this stuff, all this I want to redirect to a file. It was good, man. Yeah, it was really good. Got to climb a, a mountain, my favorite mountain. Got to see my family. Hey. Apple script, nice. So you're um you're launching a debug session of Xcode from like Emacs or something? Oh, okay. So you change its R debuff. Ah, okay. Nice. I think you can also, can't you do, can't you just manually connect to LLDB from the command line? I mean, you'd have to like learn LLDB and stuff. It'd probably be way easier just to do Xcode. Oh, nice. Right on. Cool. Apple script. Right on. I use a lot of Hammerspoon for things like that. This is Hammerspoon. 
you can um, configure it to do stuff um, based on key, you know, sh keyboard shortcuts, and it can do a lot of things. It can connect to, it can inspect a me an app's menu. It can like, you know, look at an app's open windows. It can emulate mouse events. It can, it can basically do like everything that Apple Script does. All right, cool. So all we got to do is reset, or I mean, change the RD buff. Oh, oh, right. Oh, I was clicking. Right. Well, yeah, Hammer Spoon. Basically, Hammer Spoon is this. Let me open it actually up. You can, basically, these are a lot of, like, you can script everything in Lua which I hate Lua, but let's try and get it to work. So I've got some scripts and stuff, like whenever I want to export something quickly from Photoshop, I've got a, key a keyboard shortcut for that. I can quickly run my game from, run and build the game from any window, anything. So yeah, Hammer Spoon is kind of useful. It's a nice little tool. Get a fun lunch break. Gamepad? Nice. Really? You can do it with browsers? That's crazy. Okay, so we're going to need to take the log function, and I believe it maps to nothing in, re in release mode. And I'm going to totally change that. Okay, what's this other kit log function I have, though? What the hell is that? What is this? Log. This is like... Whoa, this is exactly what I wanted to use. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, I'm scripting. Which I've heard actually works. Okay, do I ever do this? What do I when do I ever call kid log? Okay, apparently I do. No, that's there. This is when I log a value. String key in depth. Oh man, this is ancient code. Wow, this is before I created Valtry. <laughs> I don't really need this, man. Don't need it. All right, let's get rid of that. It's black magic. Do you trust it? Wow, so these functions are never, ever, 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 ever called. No problem. Just go up here and comment out the one. So, yeah, and, um, Basically, there's going to be no difference between no log and... Huh. And instead of Kogo Sudi log, we're going to call Kits log. Kit log vargs. Vargs. Wait, wait. There's this other log function no need. 
This, what is this? What is this? You trust it? <laughs> it's black magic you can trust, huh? It's like black hat. It's not red hat, it's black hat. It's not white hat, it's black hat. It's a dark charcoal hat. It's a, it's a really dark gray hat. Okay, so now that I'm redirecting all these all these logging functions into this log function, I can now control it. I can specify whether I want it to go to the console or C out, basically standard out, or um, or log it to a file or both. And this is actually already kind of set up for it all. It outputs a line. It uses F open, which I can really improve on that. But this might actually work. Whoa. Okay, let's see if we get a log.txt file. Actually, it shouldn't have any console output this time. It should all be log.txt. Okay, so it still outputted some stuff. So this is where I'll need to redirect. Um, but let's see if it did the log.txt. It didn't put it here. I think it probably put it in build, debug. Yeah, cool, but it did, did, did. Nice. Cool, good. We got some some stuff outputted to the log.txt right in the directory of Songbringer. Right where saves.txt is. This is exactly where I wanted it. Yeah. Uh, right on. Woo. Okay. Let's start by let's sort of redirect um standard out now. So we need to create an OF stream. All right, we can put this all in the same function new too. Actually, while this is, I might as well just clean up kit.h because I'm not gonna want that, that's stupid. And this can be, It's more of an important method right there, log. And this. We don't have we have no more no log. There's no need for no log anymore. We always want to be able to log. which means I need to be careful about the log statements I put into my release code. But there's really not anything too bad. Okay, that's a change I need to make for sure. So I'm gonna check out all my code. Where do I have no log? I wanna take off 
Any references to no log? Oh, we got application. Mm -hmm. It's the end of the prologue for no log. Uh. Okay, I don't really need to take no log out of all the build files, but just taking it out of the uh, kit.h is, is important. Just clean that up. Okay, so now log is going to have a static um, OF stream, right? OF stream. Yeah. Out file. Mm, looks like I do have to put a file name here. Okay, I might as well make this a static that's usable by other stuff. So we'll call this log log file. Wait, is that possible? Probably not. Oh, it's just because I don't have. I don't have OF stream. I think that's F stream. Or is it O stream? O F stream? Yeah, it's just F stream. I also need IO stream though. Oh, I just need to use using. Duh. Okay, I'm going to put log here up at the top. Log, log. Log and assert, these two things belong at the very, very top for sure. Okay, so I've got some old console code that I used to use, and I just check if the log stream's not open. Yeah, static OF stream. So if it's not open, then open it. Mm-hmm.
So far I don't need to put that as a static global, so I won't. Slug, slug, it's big as heavy as wood. Slug, slug, it's better than bad is good. Does that really need a sea stir? I'm gonna go UA using using standard iOS base. Don't forget powdered toast, man. It's vitamin F. Yeah. Oh, I love the vitamin F. It's so funny. Okay, so we're now ready to save to the log file. Only if it's open though. Log file is open. We're going to output um, our ret string. And also end L. And we want to put a well, so we did the end L. Wait. How many things we got in using? Using standard end L. There's no need to close the log file. At least not yet. I'm trying to think of how we can close the log. I guess we could prep the log. We'll so we'll have two more functions we need to add for logging, like init log and close log, or open log, close log. All right, let's get those in there. So main.cpp can call init log before. Um, before Coco's 2DX outputs its initial stuff, and that way, um, even that will get redirected. So, I guess we'll call it log init or open log. What's up, Wyatt? Log init's fine. Log init and log close. Okay, that makes me want to call it log open and log close. Good enough. Let's get that compiling.
What's up, No Limit T? I'm, I don't understand your question. I'm sorry. Okay, so opening the log, closing the log, rolling the log, burning the log, cutting the log, axing the log. We're going to do all this stuff. Void kit. Log open. This is basically going to open up the log and redirect. And kit. Log close. And we'll automatically call kit log open when we call log, just in case, just in case somebody freaking forgot, somebody being me, just in case I forgot. Save and also in debug mode, or actually if not define no log, hey, see, good thing I left no log in there. Then we want to see out it. And hopefully, see out is using. If log file is open. Log file, close. And we're going to unredirect standard out just to make sure it's all clean and stuff. When I normally output, oops, oops. I can't remember if there's some stuff outputted before. I think it, there is. There's some stuff I output before this. So that means that there really wasn't a need to call kid log open. Or I could probably do that in game. Let's make sure this is all hooked up in game. Game to CPP. We're going to call kit log open. And after everything, after it logs the very last statement, we go kit log close. There. So those two things are hooked up. Hopefully log open is soon enough. If not, we move it into the very, very main .zpp first lines. Fire poke. What's up, fire poke? How you been, man? What you working on now? What's he doing? Rocket bunny, what's up? Hey, check it out, you guys. There's been no errors so far on today's stream. A whole half an hour of streaming with no red flashing lights. It's amazing. Okay, we've got everything started. Now, um... Let's, uh, redirect. So we want to redirect standard in, or standard out. We've got the log file. We want to save the old buff, though. The composing music? Yes, right on. What are you using? What, what software are you using to compose your music? But flashing lights look cool. Don't worry, man. They're the bad kind of flashing lights that we don't have today. We still can get some good flashing lights. Okay, so we'll st save a static, um, like old stream buff or whatever, standard. Muse score. Muse score. I haven't heard of that one. Oh, it's student theater? Right on. Sweet. Oh, wow. Look at this. You actually compose it like that with actual notes. 
I can't read it, man. It scared me. But wow. This is like a real composer, man. You must know you know, you know music for real? That's great. I wish I could read music. Okay, we got a standard stream buff. Oh, we probably need to do include stream buff. No, okay, we don't. Static stream buff, um, old C out equals no. Was this a pointer? Yeah, it's a pointer. Stream buff pointer. Oh, right. I see now. Yes, those instruments, they need, they need it. Um, redirect C out. If old C out equals null pointer, save the old C out. and redirect it. Man, hopefully this works for Kogos 2DX. I think it might use printf. Hope, I hope printf works as well. Close the log. Unredirect C out. Okay, so if old C out is not equal to null pointer, then C out dot rd buff old C out there. Okay, good. We've got everything set up. We got a log file that opens itself up. Stays open the whole time the game is open. <clears throat> and then it redirects C out. And then when it's done, it unredirects C out and closes the log file. Whenever it wants to log, it goes and formats its log, outputs it to the log file, and also outputs to the console if or to the to C out or whatever. Um if no log is not defined. All right, so let's see if it works. So this should output everything to the log.txt, including the stuff that Cocos 2DX outputs and other libraries like Steam outputs. If that doesn't work, we got to figure out how to redirect C's version of C out. Damn it, it didn't. Fmod. Steam and Coco Studio X still outputted to the wait, did they? Oh, and it did it twice. <laughs> it outputted everything twice. Because the C out's already redirected. Hmm, wait a minute. So, how am I going to do that? How am I going to get it so it. Well, what if I print F? I guess this is I guess this is kind of not a long-term solution here, but curious if this works. So run that. Let's see if it doesn't output all the lines twice, which would indicate basically that 
C has its own C out, standard out. Oh no. What happened there? Oh hey, it did work. Okay, cool. So we only got those lines. Okay, so we need to learn how to redirect um, C's. Redirect C standard out. So F reopen is the way to do it. Okay, let's start off by just doing the, the F reopen. Which... F reopen, eh? What's up, crazy guy? Hello. Okay, if a new file name is specified, the function first attempts to close any file already associated with the stream and disassociates it, then independently of whether that stream was successfully closed or not, every open opens a file specified by the file name and associated with the stream. Man, I wonder how this is going to work with two, with both C++ and C trying to write to the same file, and with C++ keeping its file open. These files should follow the file name specifications. Huh, okay. Okay, let's see about um, closing. Try using your own explicit output stream variable. Uh, see, I, can't, I don't want to do that because I can't, that's not going to redirect all the output from the other libraries. Yeah, I mean, I'll keep, I'll keep this file handle. I don't really, I don't think it's that important. I think, I think what needs to happen here, I don't really need to actually redirect it back. <laughs> oh, am I doing all this in a single thread? Yeah, yeah, this is all in a single thread. 
Yep. Yeah, Kogos is pretty much encourages it. It does all its own multi-threading, but I don't know. I don't actually like to do multi-threading myself. But yeah, maybe it's because I was discouraged by the Kogos. Okay, so I don't want to redirect C out. C out, I want to leave so that I can actually output to the buffer or to the to the console. So I'm coming out this old C out stuff. I just want to redirect C's standard in or standard out. Okay, so all we need to do is call C's um, F reopen. Yeah. I don't think so either. You know, you run your tick. You know, when you run your game tick in your own... As long as you've fixed your time step, and you make sure your game is running at the right tick, I don't really don't see the point of trying to multi-thread your actual game logic or your animation logic, you know? Both of those things are kind of meant to be in a single thread. Or at least maybe I just think of them that way. There probably is a way to think about multi-threading game logic, but I just... <sighs> Makes my head want to just catch on fire. Okay, so we're going to redirect standard out. We'll save the old standard out. Yes, C++ classes can be friends. But this is something you should kind of rarely use, I think. Okay, so F does F uh, if the file is successfully reopened, the function returns a pointer passed as a parameter stream. Oh, okay, so no, that returns the the new file pointer. Okay, I don't want to. I don't really care about the new file pointer. That's it, just standard out like that. And then when we're done, we close it. <laughs> Keys to each other's houses. Those kind of friends. Good example. Yeah, salad dongs is wise in how he doesn't use them. You shouldn't either, Rocket Bunny, if possible. Did you check out Pac-Man? What's up, Barons? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's really a personal preference on what kind of pixel art software works best for you. I'd recommend trying out different software yourself, you know, and then finding one that you like. Um, you can definitely set up Photoshop to do your pixel art. That's how I do all my pixel art. Um, but Photoshop's kind of overkill. You know, Photoshop has so much more stuff that you're never, ever going to use to do, use in pixel art, but... Uh, it does have it, so it's kind of nice to, it actually is kind of nice because if you ever did want to make non-pixel art, P Photoshop's great for regular painting and doing you know, like regular paintings basically at high resolution. So yeah, Photoshop works great, but you can also set up just about any pixel art software to work for your setup. Just pick something that works for you. You know, check out like a Sprite and um, Alt. Check out any kind of pixel art software. Or pixel edit. Yeah, pixel edit's one of them. Graphic scale, ProMotion, Paint.net. 
Piscal app. Oh, right. I've seen that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think Photoshop's great for pixel art too because I use it so much. So wait, did that work? Nice, it did. Everything except for Steam outputted. Let's see. Maybe that's because Steam used C out. Oh, but I wanted everything to go to the log. Oh, and it still didn't output. Damn it. It still didn't output um, Kogos 2DX's stuff. Why not, man? Why not? D isn't this supposed to be A? This is supposed to be AT. Let's try that. Or GIMP, right? There you go. Sprite something? Is it really called Sprite something? I know, pixel art for iOS. I tried to buy some this one app for, for iOS and it just wasn't that great. So I agree. Wait, oh, now it's like, it's outputted twice. Oh look, it did. Oh, maybe I just need to flush. Every time I output to the log, I wanna flush it, I think. So C out's not working. Wait a minute. Is that because it's outputting twice? Oh. oh this is tricky. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Like I want to redirect C out, but or standard out, but I don't. Oh, maybe I should redirect standard out, but only for a second while it's loading. <laughs> really? It's bright something? Pixlr. Okay. Let's try flushing the log. Wait, 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 wait. Let's just see what happens this time. It's almost like maybe log file needs to be reopened every time it logs, but that's it's gonna be super inefficient. Is there a flush command? There is. Uh, another new question. I've been using WebGL. Is OpenGL as good to use? Heck yeah, man. OpenGL is, well, OpenGL is for more desktop solutions. So if you want to make games for non-web, like you want to make games for computers or make games for iOS or, I mean, mobile, basically everything but web, then you'd really do want to learn OpenGL too, unless you just want to use a game engine. Yeah, I agree with Farpoke there. That using a, using a game engine or a framework or something like that is a really good way to start and it, just ignore OpenGL pretty much, and ignore WebGL even for that matter. You, like the 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 game engine you use should like handle WebGL or OpenGL for you, unless you want unless you're the kind of person that just wants to write their own engine. And in that case, go right ahead. 
Oh, right. GLES, right? All right, what happened that time? I flushed? No, maybe I didn't run it. Oh, same thing. Okay, I think it does need to be closed and reopened. Oh, man. Mm, there's really only a few things that I want. Hmm. Like maybe I should actually set up a function that can redirect standard out and then on redirect standard out so that I can just wrap my a couple things that I'm that are using printf because otherwise I don't see how this can all work. Okay, wait, let's see if we if we close the log file each time. Cool. Oh, it's cool. It's cool that you would, you would like to create your own. If you really want to create your own engine, you should check out um, Handmade Hero. There's a lot of great YouTube videos and live streams from, um, what's his name? But yeah, the game is called Handmade Hero. And I think it's just handmadehero.com or .org. And there's tons of videos on basically writing your own engine. It's outputted everything. Wait, oh, it's just the only, the last thing. Because it truncated each time, so let's see if this works. Just to combine standard out, reopen, and this whole log file thing. What? Uh, it's only outputting the last line again. Why is that? Oh, we want to append. I always base append. What is that? Append app or eight. I guess just app. Thank you. 
All right. Oh, it worked. Nice. We have the game's output. We also have the Coco's 2DX's output to standard in. Okay, that did work, but it's not efficient, damn it. The problem is that it's closing and reopening the log file every time it outputs the log, which is not efficient, it's not quick. If you're running your game in release mode, you don't want to be closing and reopening a file like every single time you do something like this. So I think really the, fa the best way to do this is to have a redirect method. So we'll go log redirect. We got log open, log close, and log redirect. We don't even need log open and log close. This could be automatic now. And we just want log and we want void log redirect. Bool. True means redirect standard out to the log. Well, I guess we'll call this redirect standard out. Okay, there, so we got that method. Now back in game, we can unhook up the log open. And the log close. Oh, we still need log close. Damn it. I guess I'll keep log open and log close. Yeah. Might as well. Okay, we'll keep those. Because we got one. Why not keep the other? Alright. Whatever. Now, we just have a redirect method. Okay, so our log redirect standard out is going to have a static old C out pointer. This log file is going to be trunk. Redirecting standard out is no longer going to be there. All this stuff is going to go in the redirect function. And all this stuff. We don't need we don't need close, but flush probably probably need. Okay, so we got an old C out. If we're redirecting, we want to redirect both standard out. And let's do log opened equals false. So we have a Boolean if we've already opened the file. Log opened equals true after we did. And now we've got Auto mode equals this stuff, 
And if we've already opened the log file, then mode or equals iOS base append. If we haven't opened it already, we're going to truncate it. So there, now it's smart about how it opens up the log file. So I can call log open later on and it won't truncate the file, but if it's the first time, it does truncate the file. So when we're redirecting standard out, we can close the log file so that standard out can be redirected temporarily. Oh, I guess this could be a little simpler. We could, instead of storing log open, we can just do a static string log file name. And if the log file name is empty, then we know it's our first time. So that will give us two things. One, what we know whether the log file name or whether the log file has never been opened before. We also know what the, we can stash, save what the file name should be for this other function. So log file name equals this. Start mode. Um, this is not opened, so we want mode or equals trunk and then else mode or equals app. Oh, and this is now log file name. Okay, now we can f reopen to that same thing. Log file name dot cster. We also want to redirect standard out. Oh man, that totally conflicts. Okay, we kind of need to comment all this stuff out, the C++ ones. Ay ay ay! So, <laughs> We could probably do a log redirect C out as well as a log redirect standard out, which is kind of kind of annoying to have to do, but
Damn. So there's no way to freaking un F reopen? <laughs> this sucks. Oh man. I just wrote all that code, now this isn't even gonna work. Or is it? C plus plus. This is C. I guess I could F reopen dev standard out, but this is only gonna work on Unix and Mac. This won't work. This won't work on Windows. Okay, let's see if this even works. Ah, oh, man, all this just to capture the output from Coco Studio X briefly. No, screw Windows. <laughs> uh. Huh. All right, well, let's see if this does what it's supposed to. First of all, let's run the game and see that the output all is ex as expected. We've got all of the my game's output should be put to log.txt and Coco's 2DX's output and Steam's output. Yes, good. Most of my game stuff, there's a few things that still need to be widgeted up. But yeah, here's the stuff we want to capture. Where does it actually do this, I'm wondering. Is it time? It's 4.40. Right. When um when do you want to leave? Probably like five ten to just make sure we find her. Okay, cool. I'll stop streaming in about fifteen minutes then. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to save the debug log so that a person can I can easily reference what happened on a person's computer. Um if I'm not there, like, you know, like, for example, a, I could send automatic reports to myself from people's games or whatever, you know, if the game fails, it crashes, it hangs or whatever, I've got a solution, you know, rather than having to be at everyone's computer in the entire world, I can just look at their log file. So it'd be nice to have this Coco Studio X stuff redirected. I think this is possible. Let's do this. Game.cpp. I think it does this when we set up. Set up the GL view, maybe? Okay, first of all, let's... Let's not save... Well, let's just continue to output everything to the console. So I've got my my output um, in line with Coco Studio X's output, and then I'll wrap where I think Coco Studio X is outputting <laughs> in some log statements, just to see where the hell it is, and then I can try this log redirect standard out.
Oh, this is right where I do screen and then game screen. I think that's in kit, right here in kit in it. Game screen. Oh, game screen's after, screen is before. Have I programmed a basic? Yes, I have. <laughs> Set of paths. Set of GL view. Ah, here it is. Okay, so we're setting up the GL view here, and then we call GL view create with either full screen or rect. So this is where we want to do the kit, the logging redirect. Log redirect. Standard out true. And then when we're done, log redirect, standard out false. Cross your fingers. If it works, we'll have it in the log out text. If basic isn't your first language, you're doing it wrong. Uh, what's the difference between a scripting language and a programming language? Well, I'm not sure the technical exact definition. I'm sure somebody could help me out here with that. But what I understand it to mean is that a scripting language is um, something that co compiles itself while it runs itself. A programming language is, is compiled basically beforehand. So basically, a programming language compiles down to bytecodes or machine language. And a scripting language is something that has to basically parse itself and compiles itself on the fly. Like PHP. PHP is a scripting language. JavaScript is a scripting language. C is a programming language. C++ is a programming language. Farfog says it pretty much doesn't exist anymore, which is, which is probably true. Let's see if we get, we got it. yes, it worked, but it duplicated some of this output. Why did it output that twice? Game goes, where is this kid in it? Oh, it's just that log redirect standard out false it's, didn't work. Yeah, see, after I redirected standard out, it went and Damn it. It duplicated all the output because it didn't unredirect standard out. So this didn't work. Interpreted, that's the word. Right. Blurry. If redirect, otherwise, F reopen. R, it's supposed to be W. Hmm, interesting definition. Beeping sound? Are you, is, do you still hear it? I think it might be the trash. The um, they're collecting the trash outside. Oh, it still did it. Just duplicated all the output after it redirected. 
Oh, so this doesn't work to unredirect. What if we just F close? Like the example. Yeah, Lua looks interesting. Farbug's like, no, please don't. I agree, I don't like Lua. I hate Lua, in fact. I don't know why, I just hate Lua. There's some weird stuff in Lua that should never have been. I do too, I have an irrational hatred towards Lua. But the weird part, the weirdest part about Lua is that there, there's some undefined behaviors. So in most programming languages, when you do something, you pretty much know that it should output a certain kind of like behavior. You know what I mean? With Lua, there's something there where so there's actually some undefined behavior built into the freaking language. They're like, yep, this is always going to be undefined. And it's something you would use all the time. It's like some hash mark thingy that's like, oh, this is an easy way to access a table, but it's undefined. It's crazy. It's freaking crazy. What time is it? What time is it, man? What time is it? I gotta get going soon. We got about five more minutes. Okay, I'm just... God, it didn't work either, did it? Did I close standard out? Let's try this one more time. Right, but not for some not for something that's like a behavior you would expect to be defined. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, right, of course, of course. But what is that? It's like the it's like the Lua hash mark operator. Wait, is that it? This is it. Ah, this is it. Yeah, right here. This is the weird part about Lua. If the array has holes, that is, nil values between other non-nil values, then using hash mark t can be any of the indices that directly precedes a nil value. It may consider any such nil value as the end of the array. Isn't that random? This is so random. This is supposed to be a youth useful thing, the length operator. But... If you have an array with a nil value in it, the the length operator is complete BS. You don't know whether it's going to return this or that or what. It's bullshit. Here, some other Lua gotchas, looks like. Lua fac gotchas. Oh, and what I, another thing I hate... All numbers are floating point. Tables are both arrays and dictionaries. <laughs> you feel like a kid with a dunce cap on? Don't worry, man. Don't worry. We're just making fun of programming languages. That's all. Not really that important. The important thing to remember here is don't use Lua if you don't have to. Which is the one thing I hate about Hammerspoon. You have to code in Lua. So as long as you avoid the gotchas, you should be alright. Oh, right. One of the things I hate about Lua is you can't return from a method without returning a value. Unless you wrap return in some 
weird statement. Oh my god, there's so many weird things about Lua. And then, oh, it also forces you to like, what's that thing it forces you to do that's just stupid? Oh, there's no such thing as a, as a while loop or a for loop or something? Or, or no, there's no such thing as continuing from a for loop? Yeah, that's it. I think you can't use continue ever. There's no such thing as continue in the Lua language. And they've, they like, they make it up to be some kind of like, um, high and mighty thing. Like, oh, this is a better way to program. You should never use a continue statement, which is bullshit. There's definitely good uses for a continue statement. Destroy all, oh, what? Yes, the what talk is so great. So great, I love this thing. If anybody hasn't seen this, you gotta watch this. It is the most hilarious programmer talk ever. And that, and the null thing. Okay, anyways, end rant, end rant. Okay, how am I gonna handle this? Man, every time I try and redirect one way, it's like, it, I guess I could open and close the log every time. Shit. Like, I can redirect C's standard out. I can redirect C++'s C out. But I can't keep my own log file open while redirecting standard out. Ay ay ay. Well, okay. This is probably the point where I need to take a break. All you need to know about programming, yes. Uh, right, usually when I take a break and I come back to things, I'm like, oh, well, I could just do that. Let's, okay, but while I'm doing that, let's get back to the code where I think I'm going to lean towards doing it this way, where it opens, it redirects on open. Wait, so let's do... Wait. Actually, I don't even need to do... Okay. Let's try this. Um, in game.cpp, when it first opened everything, we do log open. We do log close. We do log open again, and then we do log <laughs> redirect output true. And that's all we do, everything else. So what that'll do is it'll open the log file, truncate it, close it, reopen it as a append mode, and then redirect the standard out. Let's see if that works. What? All right, Bugs, see you, man. I'm about to be out of here, too. Got an appointment. In fact, yes, I think this is going to be the last time I run it for now. This is about the end of the stream, my friends. So it's duplicating output. That's, do that's fixable, though. Wait a minute, I think it kind of worked. It outputted, it redirected standard out. Wait a minute, I think it actually worked. Right? If I, t if I comment out this statement right here. It's the stream that never ends. Okay, I promise it's almost over. See, look at this. It's it redirected it redirected this standard out, so it got this output, but then it also continued 
to output to the log file just fine because it's in append mode. Yeah, I think this is this is doable. But now I need to figure out how to also get the output to the console. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll just totally ignore console output from now on. I don't know. All right, guys. So that's going to be it for today's stream. Hope you all have a great evening. Thanks a lot for watching. I totally appreciate you all. And have a great night. What, 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 what? See you guys. Laters.